she sees his notes about what a fraud she is. We all need a sweet innkeeper to keep the men away and inspire us. Also, rude. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pass the Hot Sauce, a Roswell podcast. Today we are dropping a special surprise mini-sode for your Christmas season. I'm Lorena Rose. And I'm producer Ashley. And today we are going to talk about the Hallmark Christmas movie, Entertaining Christmas, starring Brendan Fair, our very own formerly spiky-haired but still dream alien. Entertaining Christmas was on Hallmark in the 2018 season. It was directed by Robin Dunn, who has a pretty prolific resume of other Hallmark Christmas movies, as well as directing and working as an actor for such hits as NCIS, CSI Miami, Dawson's Creek, as well as Cruel Intentions 2, and something we are very excited to watch called Teenage Space Vampires from 1999. Yeah. <laughs> Entertaining Christmas was written by Marcy Holland, who also has a huge resume of Hallmark Christmas movies. She obviously understands the format well, as they keep hiring her back for more movies, including a new one this season called Time for Us to Come Home for Christmas, which I already watched and loved. <laughs> I've watched 28 Hallmark movies so far this season. Don't judge. I convinced Ashley <laughs> to do this mini-sode with me so that I could have an excuse to talk to somebody besides my cousin Stephanie about Hallmark movies with. So, <laughs> <laughs> 28 Hallmark movies. Yeah. I mean, there's over 200 on this season between, it's. I think it's close to 250 movies between Hallmark, Hallmark movies and mysteries and Hallmark drama. So... Really, I'm running behind. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so many, though. I know. And they're all exactly the same. But I love them anyway. <laughs> um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Hallmark movies or maybe aren't familiar with Entertaining Christmas, the plot of this one per IMBD says Liz is a cookbook author, crafting expert, and television personality whose name is synonymous with perfection. As she contemplates retirement, her daughter Candace uh, played by Jody Sweeten from Full House, FYI her daughter Candace is poised to become the new face of the Livingstone brand. The only trouble is Candace can't cook, or so or do any of the signature things her mother is known for. When a young girl posts a video online requesting Liz help welcome her deployed father home for Christmas, Candace is sent in her place in an effort to prove herself a worthy successor to the board of directors and win the job. As Candace does her best to make a good impression, she gets more than she bargained for when the young girl's Uncle John... FYI, that's Brendan Fair, turns out to be a reporter from the local paper looking for his next story. So that's what we're dealing with in this one. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. How do we want to talk about this? Do we want to just talk about some of our faves, our highs and lows? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I will say that the initial opening is a little bit of a throw off because they, they start, you know, you out with the mom mm -hmm. on a TV show, and then it zooms out to Candace trying her best to make a gingerbread house. Yes, <laughs> and failing miserably. And you don't know initially that this is this famous person's daughter at home trying to follow along with her mother's instructions and failing. Yep. And so she's like watching the show and trying to get tips is what you think. And then she runs out of the house in a beautiful dress and uh-oh, it's her mother. Yeah, her rich Martha Stewart style mother who is perfect at everything and Candace has just failed horrifically at this gingerbread house. Yep. So straight away I was like, well, I'm not going to like the mom because there's going to be all this parental pressure put on her to be perfect just like mom. Um, so straight away I wrote down like, ugh, I don't like the mom already. <laughs> <laughs> but the mom actually turns out okay. And she's not, I know she's not in most of the movie. And then when she shows up at the end, 
you find out that she is super proud of her daughter and super impressed with her daughter's accomplishments on the business side of the company, even if she's not a crafty guru. So I thought that was really sweet. Yeah. And she's even a little bit like jealous. Yeah. She's like, you know, I've never, I'm intimidated by her when she comes at me with numbers. Like I've just never been that way. So I wish that I was a little more like her. Yeah. And she's so good at relating to people and all this kind of stuff, which makes me think the mom is like probably an introvert and Mm -hmm. like her perfection comes from like anxiety and introvertness. Uh, which I think is a character trait of actually a lot of people who work in the entertainment industry is they find a way to like do something the best they can and do it on their own because they're not good at being around other people. Mm-hmm. But I loved, I loved the whole crafty nature of it. Cause I'm a big craft nerd and I kind of loved that Candace was like struggling through and bumbling through all of the crafts and mm-hmm. it was really cute. Yeah, she she really tried her best. Yes. <laughs> she tried more times at different things than I probably would have ever. Yeah. So <laughs> kudos to her for having heart because. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So Candace heads to this like little town to help surprise this soldier who's coming home because like his favorite cookies are like the ginger snaps that are her mom's recipe or whatever, you know, because who doesn't want to randomly show up to a tiny town with a Christmassy name in upstate New York to bake cookies for a soldier they've never met. Yeah, just like pop in out of nowhere and completely. And then how rude to go in and immediately start like, can I move your curtains? I'm going to take pictures of your entire yeah. home. Oh, like, you just popped in on these people. Yeah. Oh, is that okay? <laughs> We're just going to film this for our social media. People we've never met, like random little, little town right. people. But of course the family agrees. And then... The soldier's uh, arrival has been delayed, so now suddenly he's not coming home for four days. And pretty, pretty please, can you just stick around until he comes home? You don't, you're not like, like a producer for a famous TV show and magazine line. Like you could just stay here for four days until my dad comes home, right? Also rude. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the pressure that this town puts on her the entire movie. I'm like, come on, man, she's coming. Life. Yeah, so much pressure. They want her to judge the gingerbread contest. They want her to come to the tree lighting ceremony. They she shows up at the gingerbread contest and suddenly they want her to give everybody a lesson in making gingerbread houses, which of course we know she's horrible at from the beginning of the movie. Also, when she sees um John's picture, I almost said Brendan. <laughs> we can say when Brendan. She sees John's <laughs> pictures uh with the little girl, she assumes he is the father. Yes. Yeah. And I fell for that completely. And I was like, this girl is about to steal this lady's man. (laughs) She came here to welcome him home from the service and she about to steal her man. (laughs) So because I know the Hallmark system so well, that flashed through my mind for like just a tiny moment because I have seen... These are the ones I don't like the Hallmark movies. I don't like where like people fall in love with other people's partners when they're still together. And then it somehow still ends up magically working out okay because like, oh, that partner like wasn't in it for the long haul anyway. But I still don't like that mindset of like starting to date somebody else when they're date somebody when they're still with somebody else. Like, not cool. If you don't want to be with a person, you break up with them and then you pursue other things, or you have a mutually understand like you have a mutual understanding that you're in a poly and open relationship. You don't just start fucking dating other people when you are still in a monogamous relationship. Yep. But that's, I've only seen one or two Hallmark movies that way. So my immediate thought after my like little split second of like what you thought, (laughs) oh no, this is going to be like a case of mix up. Like he's going to be the brother, which is exactly what he was. (laughs) The little brother of the soldier. So enter Brendan Fair, a.k.a. John, who shows up. As Ashley said, she thinks that this is the dad and gets all confused and flustered and like asks him to leave and come back and then realizes that, no, it's just the uncle and it's fine. And sparks fly immediately. Or they should. Mm -hmm. I didn't actually buy the chemistry between Jodie Sweetin and Brendan Fair that much. Although Brendan Fair was very charming, as usual, in this movie. Do you know who she did have chemistry with? Her social media manager, Anna. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I was like, kiss, kiss, kiss. Yes. I did not believe that Anna was straight for one minute. Not even when Mm-mm. she said she was going to her fian- her male fiance Matt's family's house for Christmas. I was like, oh, no. They had some major chemistry. Yes. She's like yes. putting her hand on Candace's back and like leading her along and comforting her and like say, you know, offer and helping her out so that she can put her best face forward. And I know that's her job as a social media manager to like help Candace put her best face forward, but they had some major chemistry. They did. I took a couple of screenshots. Yes! <laughs> I was like, these two need to be the real love yeah. story. I was like, John can just, like, go do his own thing. He can find somebody else. But who needs to be getting together is Anna and Candace. Yes, for sure. I'm so glad that I was not alone in that. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) No, they absolutely had major chemistry. I was here for it. I was sad she left halfway through the movie to go be with her Mm -hmm. stupid fiancé Matt's family and niagara falls or wherever stupid place they went lame also how many times did they say our little town yeah our little town our little town everything always happens in a perfect little town or in like a perfect big city there's like no in between (laughs) like either you have like the big city person in the big city who, like, loves Christmas and meets a fucking Grinch and, like, teaches them to love Christmas, or you have a big city person who goes to a small town and maybe they're a Grinch and they meet someone in the small town who loves Christmas, or maybe they love Christmas and they meet somebody in the small town who's a Grinch, but those are the two formulas. There's no Either way, they're falling in love. Yeah, they're going to fall in love, and the one who does not care about Christmas is going to rediscover their love for Christmas. And that was Brendan's character, John, in this movie. He, like, admittedly doesn't really care about the town's Christmas traditions, hasn't gone to them in many years, like, doesn't really care, is more focused on his job. And then as he starts following around Candace to try to uncover her secret life as a non-crafty person, which is right, like, what? rude. Uh, as he starts following her around, he has to attend the Christmas festivities with her and his family, and he rediscovers the joy of Christmas, and he can't bear to unfold her secret of being a non-crafty person because now he's fallen in love in, like, Three and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, can we talk about, like, it had to be a small town if that's the big expose that they were counting yeah. on. Like, oh my gosh, this lady can't crash. Oh my goodness. <laughs> did we say that John is a newspaper writer? We probably did. But he wants to write about big things in the world. And he wants to, like, bring worldliness to their little town. And his little small town paper editor, the Caesar Falls Gazette, wants him to write about local stuff because local people only care about local stuff, which I hate that mindset. FYI. Yeah. That's why small town people stay small town people because they don't have any exposure to the outside world. Yep. Yep. And they could. I also noticed on the phone call um, when she was initially freaking out to her mother about having to stay, when they hang up, she says, I love you. And Ken just just says, bye, mom. (laughs) I was like, she didn't say I love you back. Oh, she's stressed. (laughs) I guess. Or maybe that was a hint at maybe she didn't know, obviously, until the end, how her mom felt about her. And I feel like there was some resentment Mm -hmm. that she was holding. And maybe she she never says I love you back until she finds out later. Yeah, that's possible that she feels like her mom is really disappointed in her and just says I love you because that's what you do not because she really means it oh Candace she loves you oh I love uh this is like a hallmark tradition that I love of course when you go to a small town they have 50 million holiday traditions that everybody in the town participates in every single one of they have a cookie decorating contest. They have a gingerbread contest. They have the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. It's like every day of the week is some special Christmas activity and everybody in the town wants to go to all of them. Right. And has anyone ever had that? Because I grew up in a small town and we had a parade and that was it. (laughs) Yeah. I like, I 
think we probably went to like a couple Christmas markets when I was a kid, like, you know, maybe in like the high school gymnasium and stuff. But that's about it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my town had a tree lighting. I don't know that we ever went. I'm sure we did. But I guess most places have a tree lighting at least. But I don't think we did. If we did, I would never attended it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we, I don't think we even had, like, we don't, there was not even a tree, like, on our square. We just had the Christmas parade, and that was it. Yeah. They decorate the, like, light poles with snowflake lights, but that's it. Yeah, that's what they do in my neighborhood here in New York. We have these cute little, like, arches that go across the main, uh, the main mm-hmm. streets in the neighborhoods around here. So I live in Sunnyside. So we have like one with snowflakes that says, welcome to Sunnyside at the end of my block, which is really cute. But there's no tree or anything in my neighborhood. But I guess in New York, everyone just goes to the Rockefeller tree. So right, that's everybody's, everybody's small town tree in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, quick Buffy tie-in. The mayor's name is Mayor Walsh. Oh, Nice. Which, like, scary. (laughs) Yeah, if Professor Walsh became a mayor, horrifying. But, I mean, Mayor Wilkins was no picnic either, so. That's very true. (laughs) Also, my family was exactly like this family when they're unpacking the Christmas decorations to decorate the tree. And he's like, you still have this? And she's like, you made it for me when you were six years old. Of course I still have it. I'm keeping it forever. (laughs) That's how my parents' house is, too. (laughs) <laughs> there's like all these like ugly horrifying like styrofoam and glitter and like popsicle stick pieces of garbage that like me and my brother made in kindergarten and like the glitter's falling off and like the glue is yellow but like <laughs> yes we've still got them yep i mean i guess if i had kids maybe i'd feel that way about my kids shit too but i don't have kids and right. probably won't so you know <laughs> <laughs> Same. And of course he finds the tag that she hides in the chair. Yes. Yeah. She is trying to pretend that she is knitting a scarf. Her social media manager, Anna to the rescue, has like she's accidentally shown up at a sewing circle because of course there's a sewing circle in the basement of the inn that she's staying at. And Anna to the rescue is like, oh, let me just go get that scarf you were knitting, and you can just like put the finishing touches on it. And she runs up, gets the scarf that they totally bought at a store. And Candace like hides the price tag in the chair and sews some buttons on it so that she can pretend she's doing something. And of course, John finds the price tag later. Yeah. Which is, I believe, what really starts his suspicions that she's not who she says she is yeah when she gets put on the spot to um do the gingerbread house yes at the contest you can see the doubt in his face yeah and then when he finds that price tag which like i don't know if you've ever put a price tag or anything that small inside of a chair but there's no way he would have just getting like, up found it and down yeah he just looked down and was like oh there's a price tag in the in the chair oh, here. oh look at this <laughs> how predictable yes. <laughs> but that sets him off on his venture to prove that she is nothing like her mother. Yeah. And his editor loves this idea to like expose the big town, like the big city, like craft conglomerate as fraud with their the daughter not being able to do crafts. <laughs> Such uh, an expose for a small town paper. <laughs> yes, yes. Such drama. <laughs> and then when they're at the the what is it christmas on main street or whatever and they're looking around and the opening shot like pans in across the cook like the dessert table and you see like the piles of cookies and stuff for people there was some fucking badass looking blueberry muffins on that table and i got hungry side note (laughs) well this is when i realized that covid has truly affected the way of me thinking because i was like get those children with their open mouths away from those cookies they are breathing all over that food (laughs) why is that food just out for everybody to touch and breathe on it should all be individually wrapped where are people's masks at this festival there are too many people here this is what goes through my mind literally every christmas movie i've watched this season because even the movies that were new this year for 2020 which i'm 
side note, I'm like very curious. I know that filming has continued on in various places in the country. And a lot of these mm-hmm. are filmed up in Canada, where I do believe that COVID rates are much lower in general. But like, I've been curious, like, about how the filming process and like how like bubbles of, you know, people involved in the production have worked and stuff. But that's just a side note. But every movie I watch, I'm like, where are their masks? They're at the Christmas festival. And I'm like, there's too many people. Where are their masks? I'm not comfortable with this. And then I have to remember (laughs) that this is not the real world. (laughs) Right. I have seen a lot of behind the scenes stuff with TV shows and and different movies Mm -hmm. and stuff that are filming. I think that they... They make everyone quarantine yeah. before and then during and then after as yeah. well. So all those people, I, I just wonder about the extras. Like, do they do that with every extra? Because... Yeah, like, I wonder how they did the... the I did notice, though, well, I have noticed in some, like, the kind of, like, background extras seems to be, like, a smaller group of people than usual in some of the new movies this year. But who knows? I don't know. Just yeah. things I'm curious about. I do love, I mean, this is, again, this is, like, a very, like, Hallmark uh, staple, if you will, that, like, despite trying to just be friendly with each other, of course, they, like, are quickly falling in love immediately, and Candace and John come home from the Christmas festival, or he drops her off at her hotel, and there's this, like, awkward goodbye, and then they're, like maybe about to kiss and he starts to lean in and then of course that fucking pesky innkeeper is like (laughs) oh hello john oh hello candace like have a good night john goodbye and like thwarts their like little kiss moment that was after the date right yeah the like not date date where he was like oh it's not a date it's for my story and but then like he's like they start like really talking and sharing their hearts with each other. Mm -hmm. And because it's off the record and she kind of starts sharing with him, she doesn't go into details, but she starts sharing a little bit, like how she has a hard time living up to her mom. And he feels the same way about like living up to in the shadow of his older brother. And they like have a moment and, and then he takes her home and fucking innkeeper lady. (laughs) Cocked blocked by the innkeeper. Yes. (laughs) Oh, and also, I liked this part. I thought this was cute, and this was a Christmas tradition I didn't actually know about. But while they're on their little date in the city, uh, John sees a, or in the town, I shouldn't say in the city, in town on Main Street, John sees like a cherry blossom branch in a window, and he tells her that there's this tradition in, I don't remember what country he says. I should have looked it up. I'm not Lisa. Sorry. (laughs) Lisa would have done a lot of research on this actual tradition if she was here. But that if the if the cherry blossom branch blooms before Christmas, then you're going to find love. And so then the next morning he has delivered a cherry blossom branch to her hotel for her. Mm -hmm. And then later in the movie, like she runs home to change before the Christmas party. And you see in her hotel room that the cherry blossom has bloomed, which means she's going to find love. And of course she does because after three and a half days, he's ready to, (laughs) he, they've never even kissed and he's ready to, uh, follow her into her life in the spotlight as the like as the leader of this big public facing company and she's the love of his life and they've never even kissed Uh, it's so hallmark three days they she got there on the 20th and she stays till christmas christmas eve not even the 24th Uh, okay yeah Yeah. so (laughs) wow yeah wow 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 yeah and once again these people are rude they're like can you cook for our whole town won't you please cook for our whole town yeah, we thought it would be so fun if instead of just like having the surprise for our father coming home from the military that we had a little family dinner instead let's have a party with the whole town can you cook for all these people i mean we can help but we're not like you so you'll have to do most of it on your own yeah is basically what they said yeah. <laughs> so rude <laughs> so rude. Oh, poor Candace. So she goes to try and, like, she practices in the hotel kitchen that night to try and, like, perfect the recipes. And she burns the turkey and all of her vegetables look like crap. 
And I loved this moment, too, when the innkeeper comes down and sees that everything's burned. And she just is, like, so sweet to Mm -hmm. Candace and, like, realizes Candace has no idea what she's doing. And it's just like, you'll be fine. Like, your secret's safe with me. Like, just do your best. And Yeah, she's like, this is... You know, maybe you don't need to try to do your mom's Christmas. Maybe you should try to do a Candace Christmas. Yeah, it was so cute. And she's like, I don't even know what that means. And she's like, well, maybe this is your chance to find out. Yeah. We all need a sweet innkeeper to keep the men away and inspire us. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel her, man. Cooking is hard. Yeah. I don't know how to cook a Thanksgiving or a Christmas dinner. I tried once, and it wasn't even, like, alone. Like, I had the help of my roommates when I was, like, 19. That was the last time I tried to prepare a holiday meal. It was mediocre, but we were living abroad, and so we missed our, like, American traditions for Thanksgiving. So we tried to make a Thanksgiving dinner, and it was mediocre at best, and I have literally never tried again. (laughs) We cooked, uh, my partner and I cooked Thanksgiving this year for just like us and two other people because of COVID. And now my partner knocked it out of the park. The turkey (laughs) was fantastic. The mac and cheese, so good. I made dressing. It was all right. (laughs) I also made squash, which I thought was delicious, but it ended up being cheese with a little bit of squash. (laughs) No wonder it was delicious. Right, yeah. So it went... Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I don't blame Candace for being uh, hesitant and overwhelmed to prepare a dinner for the whole town. But mom to the rescue, Liz Livingstone magically shows up in the town. And this is where we started to get to see the mom's sweetness a little bit. And then she really does care about her daughter. Mm-hmm. And like Candace has like taken a lot of time to design things that are important to the family and like puts her foot down when her mom is like, oh, but wouldn't it be more perfect if we did a roast or wouldn't it be blue? And she's like, no, these are the things that are important to them. Like, these are the things we're going to do. And her mom is like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And then she finds out that John has taken Candace on a date and she is into it. (laughs) Yes. She's like, oh, sweetie, a date, the love of your life. Three, yeah, three tell days. Me everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, already we're almost at the end of this movie. Um, I mean, it's only an hour and twenty four minutes long, so right. <laughs> but we've blown, we've blown through all of Candace's mishaps and the and the growing uh, sense of affection and between John and Candace and. Then Candace goes by his office at the newspaper to let him know that the party is going on and that he should be there. And she sees his notes about what a fraud she is. She's going to tell him, too. Yeah. Before she sees the notes, she's going to tell him it's time to come to the party and I have something to tell you. And it's that she's not perfect. She's been faking it this whole time. Yeah. He runs to turn in the article that he's written about her. And she sees his post-its and finds out that it's an expose. Ooh. So she runs away. Yeah. And that's exactly what I would do. I hate confrontation. So oh, yeah. I would also just run away. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of there. Also, his big compliment to her is, you look really good. Yeah. That's it. That's the big compliment at the end. <laughs> I mean, I would say that's about right. Like, okay, here's something that bothered me about this movie. Um... Jodie Sweetin is a perfectly normal sized human being, but she is not a supermodel skinny body. She is perfectly normal. She looks like a person who, I don't know if she had a boob job or maybe she's had some kids. Maybe she's just busty. I don't know. Doesn't matter. She's not rail thin and they like dress her in fucking like dowdy paper bag shit. Like, yeah. she's wearing these, like, loose, like, long flowy vests, like, loose flowy shirts. Like, this dress is not exciting at all. The dress at the end? Yeah. The It's an interesting take on a boob window, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's one way to do it. The dress in the very beginning was nice. Yeah. But after that, not so much. Yeah. Her clothes just were very, I felt, dowdy for, like, the young woman that she is compared to some of the other 
Hallmark things uh, that I watch where they are more typical rail thin women and they get to wear all the cute stuff. And I'm like, cute stuff mm-hmm. exists for people who are not a size zero. You could work a little harder to find it. Right. Your Hallmark. People fucking love your movies. Like, you could dress somebody who's a normal size in cute clothes, too. Yep. But I did love the little girl Harper's little silver, like, mirror ball sparkle dress for her dad's homecoming. Was very cute. Yes. Also, the, so, like, halfway through, she buys the camera. She sees the camera in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that. John is a little bit intrigued by her her looking at the camera. So she finally buys it. And then she takes all these candid photos to hang up of all of their family traditions. So that the dad could be, you know, he could see what he missed. Yeah. And that part was really cute, too. Yes, I like that, too. Because she is creative, just in a different way. Like, she's a great photographer. She's passionate about Mm -hmm. photography. Like, that's the end of things she's been doing for the magazine but because it's not her mom's type of creativity she's always felt like a failure there but Mm -hmm. yeah i love that moment where she finds a way to be creative in the situation and takes all these beautiful family portraits or not even portraits candids they were good pictures too yeah i mean they obviously had a professional photographer that you know took those perfect moments but (laughs) yeah that's true but the like the arrangement on the wall and everything in the different christmas um frames that that they used it was cute yeah it was super cute and of course at the end when they have their big kiss finally the entire family is staring at them out the window or out the door yeah fucking watching a bunch of peeping toms (laughs) (laughs) just let them have their moment jeez (laughs) uh they don't care no kiss again yep yeah so that's it this is a cute movie i I was a fan. I haven't seen this one before. It just came out in 2018, which is the year that I moved to New York. So I was kind of busy that Christmas, and I know I did not uh, keep up on my Hallmark movies that season. So this one slipped under the radar, and I didn't didn't even know there was a Brendan Fair... uh, a Brendan Fair Christmas movie until we started doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched it yet, folks, it's on... uh, It's on Hallmark this season. So far, the viewings of it have kind of been in the middle of the night, but uh, it's aired a few times, probably going to air a few more times. So uh, you can catch it on the Hallmark channel. Also, if you feel like buying it, I know that it was on YouTube, Amazon Prime, Vudu. It was like $9.99. So quick, quick $10 movie. Yeah. So if you love Hallmark movies and or Christmas in general and or Brendan Fair, and you want this to be a part of your yearly Christmas traditions, you can own it for the low, low price of (laughs) (laughs) $9.99. So we're thinking about watching other Brendan Fair movies in the future. Mm -hmm. So just be on the lookout for that. Yes, we are in talks and sorting out perks and fun things to do with y'all in a Patreon. So uh, stay tuned for that, listeners. We're hoping to launch our Patreon in the new year. And one of the things that we have loved doing as mini episodes and we hope y'all have loved has been these little movie recaps with Brendan Fair and other, uh, other stars from the Roswell TV series. So that's definitely going to be one of the perks on our Patreon. So keep uh, an eye and an ear out for that. Well, thank you for joining us for this special episode where we watched Entertaining Christmas with Brendan Fair. We hope you all have a happy holiday season and we will see you next time. Bye!